Hey guys, we are back in the kitchen today and I am making my meatloaf. This has been highly requested since I went live doing my last meatloaf and almost burned down the house because I had a pie in there that I didn't know was in my oven. Anyways, it's neither here nor there. Um, it is actually just one of my recipes today. So our ingredients are, we have some saltine crackers, some sharp cheddar cheese, I have a little bit of Parmesan, Worcestershire, you already know, an onion, an egg, super lean ground beef, sugar-free ketchup. Did I mention garlic? The garlic. Let's go. We like the cause, the cause that go boom. Okay, so we just chopped a half of an onion because this guy was a big guy. Okay, so like I was saying, we already chopped our onion. Now we're just going to go ahead and add in our ground beef. All right, straight from the butcher's own block. Okay, don't even know where I got that from. That was from Games in New York? Don't know. Anyways, so I've added in my onion and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic powder. So I am a chef's daughter and I don't measure a ton, but you can go ahead and put a tablespoon and a half in. I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle it lightly, huh? Let's take it easy on the sodium. And then we have our Worcestershire sauce. Whenever I have an excuse to cook with Worcestershire sauce, I will. It is that delish. So we're gonna add some splashes of the Worcestershire sauce in and I could do this a few times. You guys can probably put in about um, a fourth of a cup, no problem. And we then take our egg and we're going to crack it into our mixture. Now we're going to go ahead and mix all that in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and mix it with our hands. I know, not the best thing to do or feel or be a part of. This is how we do it. I'm all about the seasoning, honey, so I'm going to go ahead and add in some more garlic. Hi. And you already know, I told you guys you're going to be doing lots of Worcestershire. Hi. And a splash of red wine. Whenever I'm cooking with red meat, I use a little dash of red wine. Whoa. Now we're adding in our saltine crackers. I usually do like a full sleeve, but now that I'm walking a straighter path, I'm doing only about eight or 10 of the crackers and I'm just mixing it in to my meatloaf. Okay, make sure you tuck it in so you don't get any inconsistencies on the side. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make the divot down the middle. That's literally how I make it. I just like make a little trench little moat, if you will. And then I'm just gonna put two slices of the cheese right in the middle of it and just kind of break it in there. And this is a nice little surprise, little savory surprise. And then we cover this with the top layer of the loaf. So, boom. And we're, we're tucking, we're tucking away. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on top. So we're gonna create a divot and then put two more slices of cheese on top. Okay, so now I am going to put this aside because that is our one meatloaf. And then let's go ahead and take a look at my little meatloaf pan, which is literally microscopic. It's only a few ounces. That's my meatloaf pan. So what I'm gonna do with the remaining meat mixtures, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna line my little pan. Look how cute this is, you guys. It's so small. This is going to keep me correct and on track. And I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with the big meatloaf that I'm doing with this one. And I'm just going to do half of a slice of cheese on mine. And of course I can have, you know, willpower to you know, have just one slice of the other one, but this one is just so much easier for me to just see it all right there. Okay, and I'm just covering this with the rest of the meat mixture. This is seriously the cutest thing in the entire world. 
And these are actually Cuisinart or Cuisinart, whatever it is. And it comes in a pack of three. I got these at TJ Maxx. I've also seen them at Home Goods. Boom, we're gonna create our little divot down the middle and then add the half a slice of cheese. Now we have our two meatloaves. Look at the comparison in size here, you guys. Just adorable, right? Um, nice. So what I do with my meatloaf is on top, I garnish it with just a little bit of ketchup. And so we use the sugar-free ketchup. And I just do like a little zigzag design like this. And then I'll do a little bit here on my little baby one. And then I cover it with some Parmesan. And it just like kind of creates this like crust on top that is just super yummy. Okay, so we're gonna put our big meatloaf in for an hour on 400 degrees. And we're gonna put our little meatloaf in for 30 minutes on 400. And now we wait. Here is our meatloaf. It smells absolutely amazing. And obviously meatloaf isn't something that's ideal to have on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Um, but here and there, it is a nice little treat. And especially if you have it in smaller portions, like my little meatloaf here, it's good to go. So I hope you guys enjoy. I have been having this meatloaf for years, so I already know it's delish and I can't wait to eat. So here's the final results. We have our big meatloaf here and then we have our baby meatloaf here and they both smell delicious. I'm gonna put them next to each other for a size comparison. And again, doing a little meatloaf is totally optional. I just do it for my own mental health, <laughs> but let's go ahead and cut into these. I can't even begin to explain how adorable this is. Look at this little baby piece, you guys. Too cute. Thank you for the happiest year of my life.